welcome back or welcome if you are just switching well, streams after watching the afternoon session of the European Tour event from Gibraltar. I'm Chris Murphy and with Colin Lloyd alongside me, Outside. we are bringing you the action live from the PDC Women's Series and we're into the second of the six events Outside. that we will stream live on PDC TV over the course of this weekend. Lisa Ashton winning the first but losing out to Joanne Locke Outside. in the quarterfinals of the second. Locke is now battling it out with Fallon Sherrick for a place in the final, but Sherrick is 4-1 up in that Outside. match. It's a race to five. And Dieter Hedman looking to book her spot in the final. She takes on Corin Hammond of Australia, who I believe Bullseye. you had a, a good old chin wag with recently, Colin. Yes, we did, Chris. Um, Outside, Dieter's was wonderful. very fortunate to have Corinne come on to the Dark Show podcast. And a very, very nice chat it was, talking about all things ladies' darts and whatever, and the opportunity that's been given here to the ladies by the Professional Darts Corporation. Uh, an all-round lovely lady. Lovely lady. And spoke very highly of the ladies' darts and of the... PDC and yeah, really nice lady, really nice lady. Was a finalist, of course, on the women's series last year. Corinne Hammond lost out to Fallon Sherrick in the final event of the four that we had last October in Barnsley. Now into the sixth event, we've still only had three different winners. And if it is Hedman and Sherrick that win this semi finals, it will stay that way. Dieter Hedman once again is there or thereabouts, isn't she? If she does go on to win this event, she will join Lisa Ashton at the top of the Order of Merit 60. on the same prize money after a couple of events. You know we say about the, uh, the Scottish and the Welsh contingent. There's quite a few Aussies now, aren't there? Yeah. But as far as I'm aware, Kareen's the only one flying the flag for ladies' darts at this moment in time in the UK. Yeah, we've had Simon Whitlock and Damon Hetter both get victories in Gibraltar today. 95. Corin Hammond, well, she didn't manage to make it past the second round in the opening match, opening tournament rather, but... He's one away from the final here. 38. She's got that tough Aussie grit about her. She's, she's been a great competitor over the years since she came over to the UK, playing in the BDO events, the World Trophy, World Championships and World Masters and 45. so on. Had some great results, but yet to win <coughs> a really, really, really big one. And she has an opportunity today to rubber stamp that. Well, Hammond herself is a, a former World Championship finalist, of course. Well, lost out to Lisa Ashton in 2017. And Dieter Hedman has been in that position three times, or, although on each occasion came rather closer than Hammond. 140. Has moved over to the UK permanently from her hometown, which was Newcastle in New South Wales, a long way from the other Newcastle. And now lives in Waterlooville, 44. near Portsmouth. Well, a double 16 here for a 101 for Corrine Hammond. Thank oh, you. that's a beautiful shot. Break of throw, nice little 101 checkout. I was just about to say, Murph, what's there not to love about moving to the UK, leaving all those golden beaches and sunshine behind to come here to rain, 84. wet? There's some summertime. No food, no fuel, no <laughs> toilet roll at some points. <laughs> no one's welcome to the UK, we're closed. <laughs> but Back no to the darts. 
One hundred. On the positive side, I've been to Australia before, and you don't have to worry about snakes and things here, do we? So every cloud. This would be a eighty. A big win for Corinne Hammond if she can turn it into that. Not just in the context of this tournament, but also down to the fact that she's never beaten Dieter Hedman in a ranking event before. Six times they've met, and six times Hedman has come out on top, including a. 4-1 win in the quarter-finals of the first Women's Series event last year. Eighty-five. Yeah, it's going to be a tough battle. Tough battle. But she'll certainly be up for the challenge. You don't get this far in an event, Chris, if you're not not performing and playing well. 100. But as I keep saying, you can only control what you're doing. You can't control what your opponent's doing. 20. Trying to hunt down a treble here. 60. May have been a case for switching, but she was determined to stay on that treble 20. Allowed Hedman at least two visits to clean up this 161. You yeah, actually look at this leg, Chris. Corinne's been a little bit unfortunate, well, really. 84, 80, 85, 60, but that's not to take anything away from Dieter, who's gone 100, 140, 100, 100. That's the way you want to get your throw back. But excellent stuff from Dieter Hedman to leave. 100. 61 after just a dozen darts. Has to take it out, though. Hammond has reappeared in the rearview mirror. Yep. Too good there, the uh, eye roll as she asks the referee. 50, it was 50. 57. And it just caused her an extra dart to leave a double. And Hammond now, it may be the bull route for her as well. 67 now, bullseye for a holder throw. Game oh, show. what a fabulous dart that was. That will really hurt Dieter Hedman. Very unfortunate that she went for the 25 for the 36, but hit the bullseye, so had to waste another dart, and only got the one dart of the double. But fabulous finish by Corrine Hammond. 2-0 Corrine Hammond. And it's checkouts now of 101 and 92 for Hammond. 44. In opening up this two-leg lead. She may well have a repeat of that final from last year. Because Fallon Sherrick is through. A 5 1 win one for hundred. Sherrick against Joanne Locke, who knocked out Lisa Ashton. Nice little steady ton there from Corrine Hammond. She'd have been happy with that after these were only kicked off with 44. 60. And only 60. So Corrine Hammond. What she would give to have at least one treble in this combination, possibly take the throw, and there it is. 104. There's another one for good measure. Yeah, really good stuff so far from Hammond. Just almost visibly see a bit more confidence appear in Corinne Hammond after she took out that 92. 100. Having seen Hedman have the misfortune of hitting the ball inadvertently in the first dart of her combination checkout. Maybe Hammond is just starting to feel, you know what, this is going my way. 45. She will be in no doubt as to the talent and experience of her opponents. Still has three more legs to get. 100. That's a nice ton there by Dee, but I think she'll be a little bit disappointed after that first dart, Murph. That was a, a nice little 60, opened up all of the bed, and she didn't quite punish 140. that. But Corrine Hammond steps up and hits a second 140 this leg to leave 76 after only 12 darts. How much pressure will that 76 be under?
100. It's under some, but it is a fantastic performance so far from Corin Hammond, who now needs a treble. Couldn't find it, so Hedman will have the opportunity 86. to convert 97. Hammond hasn't missed a dart at double yet, so you feel that Hedman may well need to take this out. Nineteen scored. With seventy-eight remaining. It's that traditional route again, where many a modern player would have gone double nineteen, double top. Thirty-seven. Game shot. Still a hundred percent on the finishing. It was a little wry smile when. Uh, Corinne come back to leave that double top because she'd have been thinking to herself how on earth did I miss the big 20 it's okay missing the treble 20 but not missing the big number she, I think she probably thought to herself I bet I get punished here well she wasn't and she did get to come back for that tops and duly hit it 3-0 to Corinne Hammond Dieter has got up her game a little bit more now here Murph I think if she's going to get back into this match it's up there with the best performances we've seen so far. 43. Not just in terms of averages, but also in terms of the opponent that she's playing against, the fact that it's in a semi-final. And it took her until the last event of the 41. four that we had last year on the Women's Series for Corinne Hammond to really make her mark. Doing it early, it gives you a chance, doesn't it? remember a couple of places available at the Grand Slam of Darts and at the World Championship to be decided from the 12 Women's Series tournaments 100. that we have this year. Six of them played this weekend and at the end of those six we will know one of the players gracing the Grand Slam. 97. I like that. I like that setup. I like the way they've done that all to play for this weekend yeah it just gives us this weekend a little bit more meaning doesn't it the winner of the order of merit of events one to six will be in the grand slam so will the winner of the order of merit six events seven to twelve and then the overall order of merit after 12 events we'll see the top two women qualify for the world championship i like it 85 i like it a lot I, i'm personally a bigger fan of qualifi qualification for events over a period of tournaments rather than just a one-off qualifier for anything all the players are capable of having a good day aren't they winning three or four matches playing well but doing it over a sustained 96. period of time suggests that the cream will rise to the top yeah I agree with that I, I quite like that idea myself you tend to find I'm certainly not knocking 60. it, but the amount of times you find that when a player qualifies from the, the first event for a Euro Tour qualifier, they'll play one directly after it, and the amount of times that a player will qualify for both. Mm. But that's the way the system is. We all know that's the way the system is, and you know what you have to do. 84. Well, history would suggest that if Hammond hits a treble here, and this will go out. Not sure about... 58. Starting on the uh, 18s there, but had she hit the 54, she might have been leaving the bolt. 58. Well, Dee will be disappointed with that dart in the treble 19, but good recovery. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was in like no, Eight, was 88. But Kareen Hammond now, 60 here for a 4-0 lead. And for 4 out of 4 on the doubles. Well, that run comes to an end. Game shot. But crucially, she hasn't gone to the board, had a double in a visit, and not taken it out. So even though it isn't a perfect record, it will feel that way to her opponent because she's not had opportunities.
Well, the way that Corrine's playing, 28. Paul, and the way that she's finishing, I can't see any way back for Dieter into this match. Not unless she really gets her scoring boots on and gives herself a few more opportunities. 55. Which we also know that she's capable of doing. But to win five legs on the trot when someone's playing as well as what Karine is, that will take some doing. 100. The journey of a thousand miles must start with the small step. The first small step and Hedman is hoping to take that, but Hammond 100. isn't really letting up. Doesn't appear to be phased by the occasion, the importance of winning one of what could be five more legs. 43. Staying calm, staying focused. Very similar in the approach to her shots as Fallon Cherokee, just ultra focused in her own little bubble. 55. I mean, you can react after a shot as long as you're calm and zen and ready for the next turn. So just going back to touching on, say, Fallon and Lisa. They don't give a lot away. 82. Not with facial expressions or body language. And that, that's really good. And that's, that's good to see. That shows they're in the zone, they're focused. And they're up for the war on the dartboard. 44. And it can be difficult, can't it? If you get frustrated, you know, anyone in any walk of life to be frustrated and not show it is a skill in itself. Yeah, well, I was pretty good at that. <laughs> My nose has just grown a foot. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Colin Lloyd said that with his tongue pressed firmly against his cheek. Hedman just having a bit of a practice swing in the background. Hasn't really found her feet in this semi-final, but Hammond is giving her a chance here. Should have been so disappointed with that last dart at the 18 as she hits yeah. a four. Well, double 18 here for a one, two, three. Oh. 105. Dare I say she almost busts that. It was closer to the treble than it was the double. And the thing about it is Chris as well. A double nine. Corinne didn't really press there. We know she's capable of taking out 118, but this is a funny one, double nine. Straight at it. Well, at least she's got the two darts. She's got the for the one, the double four. Now then. Yeah, that's a good finish. That's a good finish. 4-1 now to Kareen Hammond. But Dieter's has got to sustain it now. For at least another four legs, and that's without Kareen hitting anything, really, which isn't going to happen. 134. I rest my case. Yeah, exhibit A. On show from Corin Hammond. Hedman in this run to the semi-final she averaged actually more than 90 in her first match of this second event when she beat tina nailen 80 before seeing off mem martin makuru suzuki and then lorraine hyde going one step further than the first event which she lost at the quarter-final stage to rihanna sullivan 60. In these series of events, as you'll know from your time playing on the Pro Tour, it's important that when you don't win, you are getting to quarterfinals, semi-finals, because it is, you know, just the, the top spot at the end of this six and then the top two spots at the end of all 85. 12 that are important. You can't afford to... Having a win and then going out first round might not be enough. It needs to be consistently in the last eight, the last four of these tournaments. Yeah, I totally agree, mate. I totally agree with you. You know, if you if you do well in one, which obviously Lisa did, and she ended up getting to the quarters in the second one, you know, you think to yourself, yep, that's 
That's not bad so far. There's still one more to go. And let's at least, at least try and get to another quarterfinals. Because then it feels like the first day's been worthwhile, like you say, Mo. Well, this would be somewhere to sign off. This would be somewhere to sign off. Oh, she moved the bullseye. That was so close to a firework finish from Corinne Hammond in this semi final. 167 is how she wanted to win. She was aggressive, she went for it, but she's going to be put under pressure here. 127. Double eight. Oh, it's a wild one. No score. She busts the score in the end. She can't believe it. Still shaking her head. Corinne Hammond from the Sublime with that 167 attempt to the ridiculous. And now it's Hedman's turn to throw at the ball. 63. And it wasn't far away either. That could have really, uh, that could have. Well, she's only going to get the one dart at double four. 21. Dare I say it? Finish line itis. <coughs> You've said it. There's some shaky stuff here. Some nervy darts from Hammond. Can Hedman cash in? Game shot. Well, that was against the throw. Well, if Dieter holds their throw here, it will be uh, a really squeaky time for Kareen Hammond. Good to see she's smiling about it behind Dieter there, but um, inside she'll be kicking herself. You know, that was an opportunity. She'd be thinking to herself, now I should be back out of the table now and get my mind right for the, for the final game. But uh, 100. as it goes, she's still 4-2 up. So nice little tunt to start off with there. And Fallon Sherrick has her feet up, waiting to find out who will be her opponent in the final of the second event. If you are just joining us, a reminder that Lisa Ashton won the first. 47. Beating Rianne O'Sullivan in the final. So Ashton off to a flying start in her pursuits of returns to the Grand Slam of Darts and 55. World Championship. If Dieter Hedman can complete this Houdini-esque escape and then go on to win the tournament, she would go level on ranking money 87. with Ashen at the top of the early order of merit. Well, it was all going so right for Corinne Hammond, but it started going so wrong. That's an excellent response to that bounce out. Yeah, good recovery that. Didn't lose focus. Stayed in that zone. Bounce out treble 20. And then still picked up 120 points anyway. 180 floor, 85. as they say in the local pubs, Chris. 180 floor. Never happened to me. Wouldn't know. 97. Well, Hammond takes 97 off to leave 129. Hedman needing to find a treble really to put any kind of pressure on. And that one's a disaster. It almost looked like she tried to place that dart in the 60 instead of throwing it. Needs a red bit here. Fifty. I think she's miscounted there. Yeah, she probably thinks she's left 167. She hasn't. And that will probably just ease the pressure on her opponent. Two. In saying that, Chris, Karina only goes up and hits 42. 
Dee, you can hit a treble here. It puts a bit of pressure on that 87. 41. Well, she's been let off there, Corinne. But none of that will matter if she can go treble 17, double 18. 20 ball. 20 ball. 62. Wrong side of the ring. Now Hedman has the chance. To close the gap. Oh, she's just the wrong side of the wire as well. Hammond's back on that troublesome 25 that she had bothered 80. with earlier in the match. <coughs> this time she gets a single that she wants. Nine score. Not yet the double. Well, will she get another chance, Murph? 16 for tops for Dita to make it 4 3. Double 10 now. Big, big dart. 36. She does get another chance. She threatened the big comeback. Hammond has thrown some nervy darts at match winning doubles. Game shot. But she does match. hit Kareem the match Hammond. winning double. And Hammond heads through to the final where she will face Fallon Sherrick for a title at the Women's Series.